Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tara, this is The Reclaimed Ranch. And on this channel I like to do DIYs, furniture flips, um, upcycle, thrifted items, lots of fun here. So um, in today's video, I do have a few thrifted items that I have used some IOD transfers on to give them some new life. And then I also have an old window um, that I'm gonna show you how to upcycle and, and make it absolutely just gorgeous. So hope you enjoy and let's get into the projects. Okay, so this first project, I found this little tea cart, metal tea cart at a thrift store and it was in pretty bad shape. It was white and rusty and so I cleaned it all up, cleaned up the rust spots, sprayed a um, coat of black paint on there and now I'm going to put the Salvation Solution by DIY on there just to keep the rust from coming back through. Uh, my mom came over one day and when she saw this piece, she claimed it. She was like, I absolutely love that thing. I want it. So I asked her what she wanted me to do to it. And she wants me to put a crackle coat on there with some florals. So that's what we'll be doing today. So I'm going to put the salvation solution on, let it dry completely. And I like to use just regular school glue. Like this is from the dollar store. It doesn't have to be super expensive. It can be any kind of white glue. Um, and then I'm going to use the vintage linen from DIY for the paint and I'm going to put a, a pretty good coat of the glue on. You want to work kind of quick. Um, there's different techniques with this. Some people like to let it dry for a little bit, but I like to keep it wet and, uh, and then immediately apply the paint. The thing with this is that you just don't want to work the paint too much. You want to put nice thick coats of paint on your brush and paint less strokes and that way it'll allow that crackle to come through. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a good coat on there and then I use my heat gun and that's gonna force it to make that crackle come through. And you'll be able to see that here in just a little bit. But some people use different crackle mediums. Um, there's different types of products out there that you can use. This is just what I've learned to use and it works well for me so I haven't veered away from it. And it's inexpensive so. That's why I've stuck to it. You can see the crackle coming through now. So the big cracks are where the, the glue was a little bit thicker. And then um, the thinner spots, of course, have the small cracks in it. So there's a good picture of it for you. And then I'll show you on the sides as well, up close with my heat gun, the, the magic happening. It's so fun to watch. Watch it actually come through. So it, you don't want to get it too close to the paint because it can burn burn the paint, but just kind of go back and forth until you get the desired look you're, you're wanting. And then of course this is the DIY paint, so it's a clay-based paint, so I'm going to need to seal it when I'm all done with my crackle finish. So I'm going to use the big top for that. Put one good coat of sealer on there, let it dry completely. And then we're gonna add some transfers from IOD to this. Okay, so this IOD transfer is called Painterly Florals. It's got some gorgeous sunflowers and I don't know if they're peonies or roses, some kind of really pretty pink flower. So I've chosen to do those pink flowers for my mom. Um, and they come in separate pieces like this, which makes it really nice because then you get creative and can do your own designs of how the floral should go. Um, make your own little bouquets and stuff. That's what I like about these is it's it allows you to be creative and design your own thing at the same time. It looks like it's hand painted, which is pretty cool. So eventually we're going to get started. So you just peel that white paper off and then use the little plastic tool that it comes with to push down on that paper. And then I always pick an end up with my finger and I stick my fingers underneath and kind of push as I use the tool and that kind of helps lift that transfer off of that vellum paper 
and stick to the, the surface there. And you got to take some time with this. Um, it can take, you know, a little bit of time. But this brand, this IOD brand, has been the best that I have seen and used so far. I've used quite a bit of brands out there with the transfers. And this is the easiest one as far as different surfaces that it sticks to. It makes it super easy to pop off of that paper. A lot of them can kind of stick to the paper and then end up folding over and then the design is ruined and it gets really frustrating. But IOD has just been awesome with their transfers. So it's the same thing, just over and over again, just building. And you can also overlap your uh, transfers, which I'll do here in just a little bit. Um, that makes it nice too. So it doesn't have to look so stringy. I can kind of fill in those bottom areas and stuff without having any problems. Okay, so here's the finished product there. I haven't sealed it yet, but you can see just how gorgeous it looks like it's been hand painted onto this piece. I just love these transfers. Um, and you can also, I left it like it is, um, but you can also take a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper and lightly go over those transfers to give it a little bit more of an aged antique kind of distressed look. So now I'm gonna go back over again with another coat of Big Top to seal in that transfer. And then this little cart's good to go. She'll be able to use it for decor. She can put flowers on it. It'll be sealed, so it'll be water resistant. Makes it kind of nice. I like to give gifts for birthdays and Mother's Day and things like that as an actual physical gift where you can use it over and over again. I mean, it's nice to get flowers and candy, but, you know, in a couple weeks they're gone and... And then you don't really think of it, but every time she looks at this piece now, she'll think of me. So this is another one of my windows that I got out of my house when we redid it. Um, just a two-pane window. I think it's like 1940s, somewhere in there. So I'm going to use Fusion's Milk Paint in Toasted Coconut. It's a beautiful tan cream color. And the transfer that I'm going to be using will pair really well with this color. Um, so with milk paint, it comes in powder form, and what you want to do is you want to use one part powder to one part water. I, I kind of warm my water up a little bit so that it'll mix in better. And then um, use a whisk or an immersion blender to blend that paint together. And you want to get like a milkshake consistency, like a melted milkshake consistency um, to get a nice smooth finish. So I'm going to mix it up and it's actually pretty watery at first and then I'm going to just let it sit for about 10-15 minutes and that's going to help thicken that up. You can see here it's really, really runny. So after I let it sit, it'll thicken up and be perfect for what I'm looking for. The thing with Fusion's milk paint is, is the shelf life is forever. It never goes bad because it's in powder form. So here you go. You can see it's kind of a little bit thicker now. And the coverage is just awesome with this stuff. I could have gone with just one coat, but I wanted to get a pretty good crackle. So the first coat I'm going to just put on and I'm going to not heat the first coat. I'm just going to let it dry naturally. And then um, I'll kind of sand down any of the bumpy areas. Sometimes there's little chunks of paint left behind that I just sand it down smooth. And it's such a velvety smooth. It's so nice to touch. Um, and then once I'm done with that, I'll kind of just take a cloth and wipe off the excess sanding dust. And then I'll 
put that second coat on. And then I'm going to use my heat gun on the second coat to help it to crack and kind of chip a little bit. So that's the cool thing about milk paint is it is kind of unpredictable, but you can kind of control where you want the cracking and stuff with your heat gun. Um, so I just want to get kind of a crackled finish to make it look a little bit older and not so brand new. So any of the fusion products you can find on my website at thereclaimranch.com. Um, any of the IOD and DIY products you can find on my friend's website at lclaneboutique.com. Her name is Debbie and she's great. If you have any questions, you can always just email her or email me if you have a product that you're having trouble with and we can kind of troubleshoot that for you. Okay, so I'm going in with the second coat now, and then I'll use that heat gun to help crack it. And I don't worry about taping the windows because that's just extra money you're spending on tape and extra time. I just use a razor blade afterward and just clean it up with that because it's quick and easy. And I'll give you a sneak peek on what the crackle looks like after we're done heating it here. See, in this little razor blade I think I got at the dollar store. You don't need much. It's just something to, to get that paint off. So I've cleaned the glass with regular glass cleaner, and sometimes it leaves a film, so I'm going to go back over it with 91% um, rubbing alcohol. Because when you apply the transfers, you don't want any kind of uh, film or grease or anything, oils underneath it. Otherwise, it will not stick. This transfer is gorgeous. It's called Wander. Look at those flowers. I mean, the colors are just beautiful, beautiful. So I'm pretty much going to use this whole entire transfer on this window. There's going to just be a couple pieces left over, but um, I want it to be kind of like a botanical garden that you're, you're going to look at when it's hanging on the wall. Look at how pretty those are. So these transfers are made to kind of coincide with each other. Um, so you can use them together like this bottom part is. I'm going to put together. Um, they go together at the, at the seam there. And then the two other pages can go on the top. But I kind of cut out the other pages and did what I wanted on the top. <laughs> That's the glory of having these transfers and being able to create what you want. So I did the hard part first, which actually wasn't really hard at all. It's that wood piece in the middle. I laid it down and then I used my little tool to kind of just push and pull. And as it raises up, it kind of sticks down and pulls it off for me. So it actually wasn't too bad. I thought it was going to be worse than what it actually was. And then the bottom just kind of go over all of it. And again, I'm going to put my fingers underneath, kind of pull and push with the, the little tool the same time and kind of just work my way all the way across. And voila, it's done. It's kind of nice to work with one big sheet like that because as soon as it's done, it's done. You're not having to think about how to create your garden. So same thing here. And you can see in the corner, I kind of had a little bit of a problem there. So 
what I did was I just took my scissors and kind of cut that little flower off and then stuck that on first and then was able to just kind of continue and it was super easy and there it is look at how beautiful that is that it just it looks like somebody just painted it and I, that's the look I'm going for so there are a couple spots on the top here that are kind of empty so I'm going to go to a different type of transfer called Millet's Pages. And this one I'll use a lot in the next couple of projects too. But it is loaded with like flowers and vegetables and fruits and mushrooms and bugs and butterflies and fish. And it's just, you can use this for a ton of projects. You get your money's worth definitely out of this. So I'm going to go to the butterfly page, pick out a few butterflies, and then just apply them the same way. Just take that backing off, put them where I want them, use the little tool, and then use my fingers to kind of lift up from the bottom. So now I'm going to take Sweet Pickens um, oil wax. It's a dark oil wax. Milk paint has to be sealed just like chalk paint. And it's going to go really well because it's going to get down into those cracks and pop that effect out. So you'll be able to see them a lot better. And it just makes it you know, I'm an antique kind of a person, so it just makes it a little bit more vintage for me. So some of these projects I will be putting on my website for sale. Um, this picture, however, is it's going to go in my booth because it's just easier. I don't have to worry about shipping it and it breaking because it actually has the glass in it. So, um, But if you'd like, yeah, there, there'll be some for sale. And that website, again, is thereclaimedranch.com. I don't worry about sealing the transfer on the glass, um, basically because it's not going to be used, you know, with high traffic or having things set on it. It's going to be on a wall, so it's typically not going to get messed with that much to have to worry about sealing it in. But look at the crackle. Isn't that awesome? That's what the heat gun does to that milk paint. And then if I were to... Um, use it on more of a slick surface, it'll have a lot of chipping as well. But since this is wood, it absorbs a little bit better. But I think it just turned out absolutely gorgeous. This is gonna be my favorite project for today. I don't know what you guys think, but you can let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so on to project three. This is a Lazy Susan. Um, got it at the thrift store for a couple of bucks and I'm gonna use Fusion's Eucalyptus for the base. And then I'm going to be using that Millet's Pages IOD transfer again for this project. I'm going to put two coats of this on there. This Fusion has the top coat in there, so I don't have to seal it. Um, so I'm going to use that for the first coat, then dry it with my heat gun. And then I'll put a second coat on. And then I'm actually going to leave that second coat to dry overnight, just to make sure it's fully cured before I go and place the transfer on that way I know that the that transfer will stick because sometimes if you have a little bit of moist paint what can happen is the transfer will actually pull up the paint instead of getting adhered down to it so it's that same transfer this time we're going to use the mushrooms mushrooms have been hot this year so every time I put something in my booth that has mushrooms in it it's been just flying out the door so Thought I'd make a lazy Susan for someone to be able to have for decor and come on your table and put your napkins and salt and pepper or just whatever, some fun decor. Look at all those mushrooms. Isn't that awesome? And those colors just pair really nice with that eucalyptus color. So again, this is going to be one that you can use the entire page on or if you want, you can cut up and just do different portions, which is what I'm going to do. This uh, particular transfer has a lot of tiny, intricate little like numbers and um, root systems and things like that. So it, it took me a little bit longer to get everything on to transfer on than it normally does. But 
Like I get, you know, just like I said before, just take your time. There's no rush in anything. Just kind of go back and forth and lift with your fingers as you're pushing with the little tool. And eventually it'll all stick down. And then you always want to burnish your transfers after you get them done. And that way it'll help adhere a lot better to the paint. So you'll see that I take this paper and kind of rub over it and burnish it in. But look at how awesome this turns out. So I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing um, with mushrooms. And then on the ends, I put the typography of it has like the names of each scientific names of each of the mushrooms. So I just put that along the edge just to be able to use it and kind of gives it a little bit more of a, a kick. And then I'm going to go ahead and seal it with Big Top. The reason I'm sealing it is because of the transfer, not because of the paint. And that way, if somebody does have something on there that spills accidentally or something, then it's going to be an easy cleanup for them. So this piece will be on my website if you are interested in purchasing it. And the next one, we have a, a wooden bowl that I found at a yard sale. Um, gorgeous bowl. It's in good condition. There's no cracks in it, but there's a lot of like varnish coming off of it. Uh, I think I paid like five bucks. And so I went to go ahead and clean it. I just have a baby wipe here, but I found that there's like a, a really thick waxy substance on there. And so the inside wasn't that bad. Um, it's just the outside had, especially the bottom, had something really gross stuck to it. So I ended up not being able to use the, the baby wipe and I had to go back and get some sandpaper and actually sand it off. But in the end, it worked out fine. I couldn't, I needed to make sure to get everything off of there because I was going to paint it. And if I left that stuff on there, then the paint would just end up flaking off eventually and looking terrible. So here I am grabbing my sandpaper. It's 100 grit because that stuff was really, really gross. See here, that goopy stuff, it even gummed up my sandpaper. That's how bad it was. So after cleaning it all up, I'm gonna get my Lazy Susan out. If you guys don't have a Lazy Susan for painting smalls, oh my goodness, you need to get one. Uh, it's just a game changer. Um, they, they're at thrift stores all the time for like a couple bucks. Makes it so much easier to paint. So I'm gonna use the DIY uh, chalk paint and beadboard and then the DIY paintbrush I can't can't ever remember the names of them but they're just super nice for for painting anything really I have like four out of the five that came out in the last release and they just have been awesome it's my go-to so I'm gonna give it one good coat I'm gonna go ahead and dry that coat with my heat gun and then I'm gonna give it another good coat and then I'll let that sit for a few hours before applying any of the transfer. Now, a lot of people say that you have to seal it before you put the transfer on. I've done it both ways. And as long as you let everything dry completely, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, so again, the millet's pages. This time we're gonna do a vegetable bowl because I see fruit bowls everywhere, but I've never really seen a vegetable bowl. And I have my vegetables out on the counter in like a really cool wire basket, so. I thought, hey, let's let's make a vegetable bowl. Somebody might want to put their vegetables in it. So this piece will also be for sale on my website. And again, I just get to kind of pick and choose what I want to put on there. Same thing. You know, you've seen the transfer process over and over again, so it's the same. But it just shows you how different and versatile you can make all these projects with just the same transfer. So it's pretty cool. I mean, they, they can be a little spendy, but it's definitely worth it in the long run, If you, especially if you're a reseller. Um, 
you totally get your money back and then some. So you can see here, I'm kind of having a little bit of trouble lifting that edge, but I just keep working it and keep working it and eventually it'll release where I can get my finger up underneath it. There we go. So this is in real time, just to kind of show you how long it actually does take. I mean, some of them went really fast, but this one was kind of giving me a little bit of a trouble with that first edge. But as you get going, it's actually pretty fast. So you can always put on a good show or I always listen to music. So you might even see me trying to sing sometimes <laughs> in my videos, but it's just, it's just a, a fun, relaxing way to kind of relax my mind from a long day. Just to be able to come up and craft and do fun things. Look at that. Doesn't it just look like it's just always been there like you can't even tell it's it's a transfer when I first got into doing transfers my mind was blown like because I'm a painter too so I was like oh I can just paint that kind of stuff on but well, <laughs> that would take me days compared to this So let me know what you guys think of like this kind of a project. Is that something that you would do or is it just something that you like to watch? Um, I'd love to hear from everybody and kind of see what, what they are doing with their projects. And here's the final look at it before it's sealed. I think it turned out just super cute. I would totally have this on my counter. And then, so the inside I did not paint, obviously, because we want to keep it food safe. So I just left the wood natural. I'm going to paint the outside with the big top. And then the inside I have um, a hemp oil from Sweet Pickens. Um, and I'm going to use that just to kind of give the wood a drink and, and to, to freshen it up a little bit. And even though the wood has some orange tones to it, it I think it just really still goes well with the, the outside because there's a lot of orange in like the pumpkins and the, the roots and the onions and stuff. So I just think it goes really well. So here's that hemp oil from Sweet Pickens. It's all natural. Food safe. And I'm going to rub this in, and then I'm going to allow it just to sit overnight. Um, let it soak in really well, and then I'll come back in the morning and rub off the excess, and then it'll be good to go. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. I want to thank you for watching today's video. Um, tell me what your, your favorite project was. And um, hope that you are willing to subscribe to my little channel that's growing. So I can keep putting out new content every week. And we'll see you soon. Bye.